Hello, everyone. I'm Shauna Cheney, National Literacy Specialist with McGraw-Hill. Today, I'm here to really talk to you and support you during these challenging times that we're all facing. So first thing I want to do is just direct you to our McGraw-Hill site. This will be updated very frequently, and here you will find answers to questions and support that you'll need for this remote learning that we're all facing currently. So you'll notice that we'll have resources and different instructional materials for that out of school learning. But today what I'm going to be focusing on is StudySync 2021. Now most of you out there that have already been using StudySync have already provided your students with their own login and maybe you have already been giving them resources digitally. Well, I do want to also speak to you, those of you who have not actually had your students maybe log in. I am also going to show you how you will have materials that are printable. You can either um, print those and um, have packets for your students. You can also email uh, information to your students or their parents. You could also attach as Google Docs. And then of course, you could always assign from our website if your students do have access to their digital accounts. So the first thing that you'll notice is I'm here on my home screen, which will probably look familiar to most of you. But I want you to notice up here in the right hand corner, and this is a great place to check on frequently. This is where all my notifications will coming, be coming in and there will be those notifications more frequently during this time that we're all facing. So as I open that up, the first thing that I'm going to notice is that my help center hours have been extended through StudySync. So here it's going to show you that support is from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and there's also opportunities to sign up for those webinars. You can always reach out to us at McGraw-Hill and you can also reach out to these StudySync webinars if you have any questions or just need some extra support. We're always here for you during this time to be your partner. So as I go back into my home page, the first thing I would like to do is have you go ahead and scroll down. And this is a place where we all know lots of great support is here and lots of things that I can really um, look at to really refresh myself and on um, resources that I can have to support my students. The first thing that came to mind when I was thinking of this remote learning is for those of you that may or may not have already had your students look up their app key for their um, devices at home, maybe for a smartphone or a tablet they have. So I'd like to go ahead and point out here the section of mobile apps. This is a great piece that you could either email to your um, students or you could attach it to your Google Classroom. And this is giving instruction step by step on how your students can download that StudySync app and find their app key and very seamlessly begin to um, use their uh, assignments or have instruction on any device that they may have at home. So that's a great place for you to start if you have not done that already. Also, there's some great blended learning videos here. There's some great opportunities for you to look at some resources provided for from our um, contributing author, Catlin Tucker, that would really give you some opportunities of how you can blend that learning now that your students are working remotely. And of course, there is always this help center. So rather than me going to all those deep instruction um, pieces today, I just wanted to remind you that that help center is there. And it would be a really great place for you to go in and find those tutorial videos. So if you possibly want to, again, look at how do I go in and uh, make assignments and create assignments. Maybe after I have done those assignments, how can I go in and how can I um, grade those assignments or review those assignments? Again, all of that support can be found right here um, on this Help Center page. Okay, so back to that home page. Let's go ahead and go back up here because the first thing I think of when I think of support for my students, maybe uh, remotely, would be the library and all of those great resources that you'll be able to find within that library. So as I open this up, let's think about ways that we could use this as a great resource for our students. So if you have already given your students their login and they've been working online, know that they will have access to their library where they could go in and they could look up maybe text they would like to read that they haven't had the opportunity 
opportunity, or maybe you could guide them in some instruction of some pieces that you might want them to choose from or look at. Because again, remember here that I can filter as a teacher also through grade levels and really sort of look at what those grade levels um, have for me to look at. Maybe there's some graphic novels that I could get my students interested in. And anytime that I do pull up anything from my library, always know that all I have to do is go into that piece. I can look at all of the resources here, but from the library or any time that I see an actions button up here, always drop down and see what it is because you'll notice that I can use this for a new reading assignment. So I could assign this to my students right from here, or if I decide that I want to create my own units and create a unit for this time that my students are at home, I could add that to the unit that I am creating. And as I'm speaking of units, if you decide to create your own unit, please go back to those tutorial videos on that home page and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions again on how to create those units. So if I go in and use this for a reading assignment, as we always assign, you will go in and choose that target audience. So I could give it to specific classes or individual students. And as I begin to customize, I can then go in and decide what I want my students to do. This is a great place for me to go in and type any specific instructions. Since I am not face-to-face -face with my students, that I could type anything in there that I would want them to know before they begin this particular assignment. And then as I go in and decide what it is that I want to assign them, do I want think questions on, do I want them to be able to watch the videos, do I want them to have vocabulary on, do I want them to have audio pieces on so they can listen to those audios, all of that is here. And there's suggested writing prompts. So again, all that you would need to provide that support for your students. I always like to go in and preview also before I even create that assignment. And teachers, this will allow you to go in and see what all is it that my students will be seeing. If I did choose all of these, I can go in and look. What does my vocabulary look like? What does that particular quiz look like? What does that writing prompt look like? So I would always suggest that you go in and preview that assignment before I create it. Then once it's created, it can go to your students digitally and they can work on that and submit it back to you as needed. And remember to review those assignments or to grade those assignments. I wanna refer you back to, again, that homepage where you can watch step-by-step -step those instructional videos if you have not done that already, okay? So back to our library, I also think it's a great time to really reinforce or relook at some of those skills that we've already taught. Though I know that instruction at this time is hard for new uh, skills or new strategies that maybe you have not presented to your students before, the skills would be a great time to go back and review any of those skills that you need to. So again, I could type in a specific skill. I could filter those skills by grade level. I could filter um, by grammar as I go in. And again, give my students the opportunity to work on those skills that we have been working on in class or just review anything. And again, that actions button always allows me to assign it from um, my library, okay? All right, so again, if I want to create units, just to remind you again, I can go in where I will find that is here to create my own unit. And rather than go step-by-step -step here, remember to refer back to that home page. Okay, so moving on, one more thing that I would like to bring your attention to is teachers, when you do log into that core ELA, does not matter which grade level that you are in, I would like to direct you to the very bottom of that page where you can scroll all the way down. And this is a, a resource that has been recently added that you may or not be familiar with. But as I was thinking about what would be great for you, you teachers to be able to look at to support you, I was thinking of this strategies glossary. So if you open this up, this is a PDF and again would give um, me some ideas of what I could be doing with my students remotely. The first thing that came to mind as I was looking at is the opportunity to build these choice boards or these Twitter boards. So this is something again um, that 
would be a, a way for you to give the students the opportunity to really demonstrate their understanding by creating um, tic-tac-toe boards. You could create um, bingo boards. All of those things, giving them the choice to maybe either choose daily or choose weekly a specific task that you are wanting them to engage with or complete. Also, they're uh, right underneath that on the next page is a great opportunity for a Twitter board. I love this and the fact that we know that our students probably now more than ever are on um, social media. So it'd be a great opportunity for you to maybe create a classroom Twitter board. And this gives you suggestions on how students could post questions or responses um, as they are working on specific tasks that you have provided for them. It really gives you that tool to support implementation and discussion, again, over those assignments. So this is a great opportunity for students to engage with their peers in their classroom as they're working on the same tasks or assignments together. And for you also to kind of um, keep a thumbprint on what's going on and reconnect with your students as they are working from home. So again, that is at the bottom of our core ELA um, instruction as well as other pieces that you might find that are PDFs that you could always look at to support you as well. And also as I'm looking at my core LA units, and some of you may have been in the middle of units and can uh, just pick up with instruction or assign pieces from those units that you are already in, but it would also be a really great opportunity for you to go in and maybe um, have your students read a novel that you have been maybe wanting to read or you haven't had time for. So I'm actually in high school, but it will look, your reading guides can look just the same in middle school as well. So when you look at novels, what I want you to notice is um, in high school especially, you would be able to have your students maybe even choose one of the novels if you're in a specific unit. But as I click into a novel, and this is a novel study that you could, um, it will look, these guides will look similar in middle school as well. As you'll notice that of course I have those comparative reading and writing, but this is a great opportunity for you to look at those reading guides. Teachers, you not only have a reading guide for you as the teacher, but you're also going to have a reading guide for the students. So this would be a great packet, as you, if you will, that you could actually send out to your students or maybe just pick and choose parts and pieces. So here we're looking at Animal Farm and it's really actually taking you by chapters. So it's already broken down for you. And along with that guide for those students would be um, the vocabulary that they'll need here. Also, you will notice comprehension questions. So your students could actually go in and write on pen and paper at home. Um, they could either um, attach this as a Google Doc, um, again, through your Google Classroom, or it's something maybe that they could just work through. Maybe you want to review it. Maybe you don't want to review it. Um, your choice, again, but these reading guides, along with those comparative texts, are right there at point of use for you to look at. So I think this would be a great time. I think this is a time that we could spend, not only we're spending more time sort of slowing down uh, with our families, but just to get a good book. Maybe this is something that parents would want to share in with their students and just engage in that time to read maybe something that we haven't had the chance to read already. And again, to be productive and it's purposeful and it can be relevant to your students, okay? So that's one great resource, but let's go ahead and go back in and look at one of those thematic units and some of the resources that we have here. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna jump back into middle school just so we can have a thematic unit here. And again, these thematic units are laid out um, the same as the thematic units that you'll see in high school. So if I click into a thematic unit here, again, you'll notice, you're probably familiar with all of these resources. Again, here would be that novel study with those um, reading guides attached. But remember that all of our content is printable and it is also, um, you can design it digitally. So for example, um, this is already opened up. So let's take a look at this. I can look at a lesson plan as a teacher and maybe look at some of the ways that I can provide instruction for my students. But again, of course, I can assign from here, just like I can assign from the library. But as you're going through again and looking at the actual text, 
Teachers, when I go in and I preview that, that will give me the opportunity again to look at those uh, most important scaffolds that our students are still probably going to need and most importantly will, will yes, they will need when they are at home. So again, remember those built-in scaffolds that we have here, those built-in languages that they can have summaries of. But again, those action buttons always drop down on those because remember that all of those are printable. So if my students do not have access, I can always preview those again as a PDF, attach those as a document, or I could email those to my students or to their parents. Also, that content is also the same way. So if my students do not have digital access, again, if I open up that content, I will be able to see that text that I was wanting my students to read. And then I can, again, attach that. Um, this is my introduction. If I went into my um, reading section, again, that would probably be a better place to look. I can go in and look at the actual text that I want my students to be able to be engaged in. So again, teachers, lots of ways for you to support your students. If it is something maybe that you are deciding you want your students to read a novel, um, always remember that they could always order that text online if you wanted them to have that full novel they don't have in their possession. Um, libraries, I'm sure um, maybe there are some public libraries that are still open where students can have access to that or ebooks where they can listen to those that I'm sure that you could find online as well. So again, um, these are just a few resources to hopefully support you. Please always remember to check back to your notification center. Always check with our McGraw-Hill support for remote learning site, and also scroll down to watch any of those videos to help support your students. I hope this is something that will be helpful for you as we're facing these challenging times. Again, remember that we're your partner and here to support you, and I'm sure we'll be checking back in with you soon and providing um, some more resources as we wait this out. So everyone stay safe out there. Thanks for joining me. Take care.